from the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural foundational Black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. Boom. There it is. What's going on, guys? I'm here. It's late, but I'm here. Hold on. I'm here. Whew, boy, it's been a long day, ladies and gentlemen. I am here. I just got settled in the crib, ladies and gentlemen. Just got settled in the crib. How y'all doing, man? I'm here. Apologize for coming on so late. Let me just let everybody know on social media how we're getting down. And my, my face is a little ashy right now. I've been rushing to get on with you guys. I've been rushing to get on to chop up game with the family. Um, had a long flight delay coming out of Washington, D.C. Had a long flight delay, but I'm here. So what I'm going to need the family to do, what I'm going to need the family to do, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I'm going to need you guys to give me a nice retweet. Let's do that. <clears throat> excuse me. Give me a retweet, um, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, give me a, a follow. I, I got to do something. Uh, I'm looking at myself. Um, and I'm, somebody said I look fine, but I'm very ashy. My face is, I just I had to wash my face real quick. And my, my um, moisturizers are in my luggage. I didn't even unpack yet. I didn't even unpack yet. Let me get some of this, this ash off me. All right. Let me get some of that ash off me real quick because that's I'm not representing. I have young people watching and they don't need to see Uncle Tariq sitting up here ashy. I don't want to set a bad example for the youngins. All right. Now let me get some of this ash off me. Oh my goodness, boy, man, I, I got caught up in DC, man. It was, um, man, I had a, it was a six hour damn delay. I was supposed to bend back in LA. I was supposed to bend back out here this morning. My flight was supposed to get here this morning. I, I got up, I went to the airport. I got up at like 5.30. My flight was at 8.30. And um, there was some kind of part missing on the plane. And this was United. And y'all y'all been hearing about these planes, <clears throat> you know, getting real janky lately. Some of these planes crashing and stuff. So I guess the FF, FAA or whatever it is, they're making sure that, you know, anything defective on a plane, they're going to just take extreme caution. So there was some kind of part that they had to fix. So they said, everybody get off the plane. It's going to be an hour delay. Then that turned into two hours. Then it turned into three hours. Then it turned into six hours. Turned into a six hour delay. I'm stuck in the, the um, what's that, the Dulles? What is it? What's it called? The IAD. What's the IAD airport in DC? So I'm stuck there. And finally, yeah, yeah, I, I am kind of shadow banned because a lot of people follow me, then YouTube starts unfollowing, you know. So we have, a, what's up, Kane? We have a man in here, um, very concerned about whatever products he thinks I use, <clears throat> which is very homoerotic for a man to sit here and really fantasize about that, so... And I'm not knocking your lifestyle, Mr. Kane. I know, I understand there's a lot of estrogen out here. I get it. There's a lot of estrogen out here. And niggas be really looking at other men's grooming in another way. But I understand people have different lifestyles out here. 
And I understand that my, that sounds like a jealous tether, you know, upset because his hairline looks like scrap metal, but that's okay. But um, listen, we're here. I had a great time in D.C. Shout out to Washington, D.C. Shout out to the phenomenal Washington, D.C. Had a great time in D.C. handling business. I was um, handling some stuff in D.C. Then I had to run up to Baltimore for a quick second to holler at my lawyers about something. Just handling business and taking care of good stuff out there. Um. What's up, Nikki the God? What's up, Michael Wharton? How's everybody doing? Glad to have y'all in here. You bought the Hidden Heroes from A to Z books? Respect. But listen, listen, check this out. Before we get into the topic, because we got to touch on some heavy topics today. Um, the tickets for Microphone Check, they're available for four cities right now. There are four cities available at microphonecheck.com, ladies and gentlemen. You can get your tickets for four of the cities. We're gonna have more cities added on the website this week. Um, Atlanta, we're gonna have the ticket sales up for Atlanta probably tomorrow, Tuesday. That's gonna be at the Tara Theater. Family, you're gonna to have to get your tickets early because the tickets are already we haven't even announced some of these cities and the, the, the tickets are already starting to sell. Um, let me show the family something here. Let me show you all the website. This is the Microphone Check website. You go to microphonecheck.com. All right, this is where you're going to get the tickets. So keep this one locked in. Microphonecheck.com, ladies and gentlemen. Get this down. When you go down, here are the cities. Um, Los Angeles. The tickets are available for Los Angeles. Um, that's going to be Thursday, May 23rd, 8 p.m., Fine Arts Theater in Beverly Hills in New York. We're going to have two big showings, one at 6.30, one at 10 p.m. That's going to be on Saturday, May 25th. That's Memorial Day weekend. It's going to be jam-packed. The tickets are flying right now for that screening, for those two screenings. Then we got Dallas. That's going to be at the Texas Theater. That's Thursday, May 23rd, 7 p.m. And Detroit, that's Saturday, May 25th, 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. at Bel Air Luxury Cinema. So you guys get your tickets right now for those four cities if you're in that those areas. Right now, we're working on the D.C. Theater, the... Um, um, Chicago, Bay Area right now. And I think Philly too. All right? So yeah, y'all go ahead and start getting your tickets right now, ladies and gentlemen, for the phenomenal film, Microphone Check. This is a game changer. All right? What's up, um, Strella? I see you, dear. So I want to see, I, I'm going to be at the one in New York. I'm going to be at the one here in LA and I'm going to be at the one in um, New York. Nice cut today. Thank you. I got a cut out there. My brother Mel the Barber tightened me up. My other, I got my barber out here, brother Sam. Then I had to get a little touch up when I went to DC. My man Mel the Barber, phenomenal barber out there in DC. Y'all look up Mel the Barber. All right. You're going to be at the screening. Y'all, y'all, y'all got to join me in L.A. And by the way, um, next, well, not even next month. What's the date? In a couple of weeks at the Hidden History Museum. Oh, let me see what the date is now. So this is going to be on. Yeah, this is like what? Almost two weeks. Well, over two weeks. We're going to have a um, comedy show at the Hidden History Museum, April 13th, featuring Miss Tori Hart. That's Kevin Hart's ex-wife. She's a very funny comedian. I think she went on the road with Cat Williams just recently. She was she did some dates with Cat Williams. So she's going to be featured at the Hidden History Museum on April 13th. So she's very funny. We're going to have a whole bunch of other funny comedians. And it, it's a vibe at the Hidden History Museum. So that's April 13th. That's Saturday night, April 13th, which is in a couple of weeks. Go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Get your tickets for that 
right now. HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. Join us. My man Dwan B is going to be hosting that. Um, Tori Hart, very, very funny sister. We're going to have a bunch of other funny comics. And complimentary food, complimentary drinks. Yeah, she's funny. Tori Hart is funny as hell. So, yeah, y'all got to come on through. Y'all got to come on through. Yes, the Atlanta screening, that's going to be at um, the Tara Theater on Saturday, May 25th. Um, I'm going to do another poetry event. I don't know. The, the comedy events hit. People love the comedy shows that we do. So, you know, I got to do another poetry thing. So that'll be coming up pretty soon. And, um, you know, we got a lot going on, family. I told you it's going to be the next few months is going to be real busy. Um, you know, we got stuff happening at the museum. We got the, the microphone check coming out, and that's going to be, oh, that's going to be insane. Then um, we got the rally for reparations that we're going to get down in uh, Washington, D.C. So it's going to be it's going to be a pretty busy season this year, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So we're here. I thank everybody for coming on in here. Thank you all for coming on in. You know, I should have took one of my um, intellectual power um, pills. My brother Reza Islam, he got these pills, these natural pills. I think they call intellectual power. I think that's the name of it. He, he personally brought some to me. I think he's selling them now. These things, it I don't know what the hell they put in them joints. It stimulates your pineal gland. It has you thinking very clear and focused. And it has your brain um, popping knowledge, man. I don't know what they put in there, but my man, Reza Islam, has these pills. Oh, intellectual power, something like that. I should have I should have brought the, the bottle in here. Well, boy, you take them things, boy, you feel like damn a genius. Yeah? So shout out to my brother Reza for hooking me up with that. Yeah, I should have took one before I started because I've been so stuck in this damn airport. So that threw my whole vibe off. Uh -huh. Sounds like no, no. This is somebody. It says sounds like riddling. Nah, it's it's some some natural. It's something he he didn't. I don't know. He, he didn't got with some herbalist and put this thing together. It's not a joke, man. Yeah, those pills ain't no damn joke. Yeah, man. Yeah, I think I think they're called intellectual power or something like that. I I should have brought the bottle in here. No, they're not shrooms. No damn shrooms, <laughs> man. But um, listen, listen, listen. Oh wait, is that it? Hold on, let me see. Wait, wait, wait. Intellectual. I think okay. Yeah, I think that's the name of it. Intellectual power. Yeah, it, them things ain't no joke, man. No, they don't get you high. No, no, no. You don't get high, man. It just makes you extremely focused, man. Make That shit makes you feel damn near ultra intelligent. <laughs> yeah, it kind of has a ginkgo biloba, St. John's wart type of vibe to it. Yeah? Yeah, and he was developing it for a long time, and he, he brought me some personal. He came to the house a couple of weeks ago. And he's like, man, you gotta, you gotta rock with this. No, be careful. No, 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 no. Reese ain't gonna put together no bullshit. Yeah, man. But listen, 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 listen. We gotta get into what's going on with y'all, homegirl, with your girl, Miss Candace Owens. We gotta talk about y'all, homegirl. Miss Candace Owens. Candace Owens, man, Candace Owens has been out here sound. She's she's been sounding kind of woke lately, and it was shocking a lot of people. She was going on these black platforms. She went on Joe Budden's podcast. She went on the Breakfast Club, and. For a bed wench, some of her verbiage has been kind of sounding like ours a little bit, just a little tinge of it. 
she's kind of leaning to some of our wordplay. Now, she's still a mammy now. Let's be, be clear. She's still a mammy. But just she's kind of pivoting a little bit. She was pivoting. And a lot of people were like, okay, where is this coming from? Where is this pivoting coming from? And after she went on these platforms, a couple of days later, the white supremacist platforms that she was on, they gave her the ax. She got fired. Or they cut ties or parted ways. But yeah, Ben Shapiro's Daily Wire cuts ties with Candace Owens. So they gave her the axe, and I think they've been threatening her with giving her the axe and cutting ties with her for a minute because of they perceived something as being anti-Semitic. I don't know. I don't know, and I'm not defending Candace Owens at all. But it's very interesting that Ben Shapiro and all of these right-wing white supremacist think tanks that basically pay Candace Owens to spew a lot of their anti-black rhetoric for them, the minute she says something that they perceive as negative about one of their ethnic groups, boy, she's up out of there. No, no, no. You can only talk negative about the Negroes. Those are the only people you can talk negatively about. Boy, she got her bed wench wake up call. And the thing about Candace Owens, because she's been such a dedicated hardcore bed wench, she doesn't really have an audience now. Because the white supremacist males, when they turn on her, she has nowhere else to go. So she's trying to low key pull an Amarosa. You know, when Amarosa got the axe from the Trump administration, Omarosa came around black folks like, hey, big head, you know, I was, I was finessing them white people. I was pretending to be a mammy so I can get some intel for the community. And we were like, ah, oh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am, you were not doing that. You were a dedicated bed wench mammy. You were mammying it up. They had to kick you out of there screaming. So Candace, his, she's getting her wake-up call. And whenever these bedwinches get their wake-up call, they do the old Queen Holly Berry move. And I always play that clip from Queen. When you come back down to the black community, help me, I's a nigra. I's a nigra. I's hungry. I nigra. Oh, we don't want to hear the I'm a nigra. We don't want to hear I's a nigra cry. I's nigra. Because she's on the Breakfast Club and Joe Button show trying to portray this. Oh, I'm, I'm so concerned for the black community. You know, the, the, the cooning I was doing, it's basically tough love because... I just want to see black people do better. So my mammying and bed winching and my vitriolic anger towards the black community is just me loving them so much. And I just want them to do better. Cap. All cap. All cap. No, she was towing the line for the white supremacists. That's all she was doing. She was looking out for her damn self. And she's trying to be, and we got a new term, bed woke. Bed woke is when a bed wench tries to pretend to be woke. You have a lot of that. You have a lot of these bed wokes out here who love Zaddy, but then try to do this performative activism so they won't seem like such a bed wench. And 
this woman could care less about black society because Candace Owens has sat up here and justified every police killing of a black person. She has gone out here to justify the slaughter of black people every chance she got. That woman could care less about the black community. She has vitriol towards the black community because she's a Caribbean tether. She identifies with being Caribbean. She's not a part of foundational black American culture. She tries, I think she tries to pass herself off as an anchor baby saying that she has some kind of ancestry to the Carolinas, which I don't really believe. That woman didn't grow up in our FBA culture. She did not. When she was on The Breakfast Club, let me show you how much she didn't grow up in our culture. Jess Hilarious asked her a foundational Black American culturally relevant question. And I used to do this on my um, Instagram Lives. We test people to see where their lineage from. Are they foundation of black American? You could ask them certain things and you can tell by their answer that these people do not come from the lineage. So they asked her this right here about something that we all should know, especially if you got foundation of black American grandparents, you go to church or whatever. Listen to this. Now, this right here lets you know this woman didn't grow up nowhere in our culture. Listen to this. Finish this response. God is good. God is good. Amen. No, 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 Jesus no. Christ. Christ. no. I thought you were going to say God is great. No. Thank you for the full God name. is great. No. 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 God, all right, Charlamagne. Charlamagne. I'm, I'm going to do you, Charlamagne. Yeah. Charlamagne, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. That's right. Where is that from? Jesus church. Christ can't. <laughs> Lord. Church. God is good all the time. Actually, why do you say all the time back? Where's that's black, that from? Black church. God is good all the time. church. Oh. Everybody said it. No, I, okay. I definitely Did you go to get that churches? one. No, I, I guess I, I didn't go to enough black churches growing up. Finish this response. God is good. Man, right there. And fair use, fair use, fair use, YouTube. That was fair use, fair use, YouTube. Family, family. Now, if you don't know that, that means you ain't been around no FBAs growing up. Do you understand what I'm saying? You didn't grow up around. She said, I didn't go to enough black churches. You've never been to a black church. That right there lets us know she didn't grow up nowhere in our culture. Anybody in our culture would know that. Yeah. Somebody said, I know that, and I'm African. Real talk. <laughs> our African brothers, some of our um, brothers from Nigeria, they know that. That's a major tether alert. No, somebody said she was trolling. No, she wasn't. No, she wasn't. No, she wasn't. God is good. Amen. She answered like a white person would answer. That's what a white person would say. You didn't grow up in no, no, no black FBA household at all. If you don't know that, you didn't grow up around FBAs at all. You understand what I'm saying? Family, that woman is a non-FBA tether. She identifies with being Caribbean. And she has vitriol towards foundational black American culture and her towing the line for the white supremacists. That's kind of her way of getting some kind of revenge on FBA culture. Growing up, she was probably, because um, remember, y'all would see old images of Candace on with the little toe up hairstyle. So you saw that she wasn't going to no black hair salons getting her hair done. She couldn't take, she couldn't bring herself to go to a black hair salon to get her hair done because she don't know any. She didn't grow up in our culture. She just now started getting her hair looking a certain way because most likely she's going to the Dominicans. I can almost, because her hair, those look like Dominican blowouts that she has. So her hair looks like now she done found some Dominicans and she's going to the Dominicans to get the Dominican blowout, to get them Dominican press, silk presses. You know, she's not going around no FBAs. They just found her a good Dominican hairstylist. 
Yeah, she when she was growing up, most likely she was teased about them edges. She used to go to school with them edges looking janky with the struggle ponytail because she was rocking them struggle ponytails until she was an adult. She's been rocking that. So I can imagine what she was looking like as a child. I can imagine. It looked very Sankofa, color purple. Yeah, it was really looking crazy growing up. And on The Breakfast Club, she talked about when she was younger, she had a fetish for Asian dudes. And then they asked her about her white husband. And she was like, yeah, she wanted somebody with a high IQ. And Okay. Do y'all remember some years back? And I don't know the context of this, there were some images of Candace Owens with bruises on her face. Y'all remember that? There were some images of Candace Owens with bruises on her face. She took pictures with her lip kind of swole. What happened to her? What happened to Candace Owens? I'm trying to look for the pictures. I remember seeing some pictures of Candace Owens and she had these bruises on her face. She took a picture of herself with bruises on her face. Hold on one second. And I never got the story about what happened. Okay, yeah, yeah, this picture here. Um, okay, 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 here it is, okay, here it is, hold on, hold on one second, hold on, hold on, hold on, okay, so this is it right here, hold on, um, okay, she said she was, it was some, what the hell, some kind of illness she had, I don't know, okay, she, okay, this is her explaining these weird bruises on her face, hold on. In my early, earlier Periscope, I spoke about the illness that ravaged my life and left me bedridden for six months late 2016. I thank God for making me sick. It forever humbled me. Here are a few pics. Um, they represent my biggest insecurity. Okay, what the hell? That looked like she got punched on or something. Okay. That's real weird. I thought, I always thought that was real weird kind of illness was that? Okay, that's real weird. Fair use. So that that looked real weird, didn't it? <clears throat> looked like she got beat on or something. But then tried to say it was a it was an illness? What kind of hell illness is that? I, I, I don't know. Could be eczema. All uh, on your neck? Was that her neck? I don't know. I don't know. And just to post pictures of eczema? I don't know. Some people will think, well, damn, she's trying to document something. Yeah, look like she got a like a black eye, a swole lip, and like she got choked around the neck. And the thing is, she don't, she, Candace won't say nothing bad about Zaddy no matter what. This woman won't say nothing bad about Zaddy. Yeah? Now, I don't know what, I'm not saying she got punched on, I don't know. I know she won't say nothing bad about Zaddy and that don't look like no damn eczema. I don't know what that is. Yeah? And we know how these white supremacist suspects get when they get a bed winch around. We know how violent they get. I'm not, I'm not saying that something was done. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just thought that was real strange. She's like, hey, look at me. I had a, I was ill some years ago. Look at me looking all bruised up. Yeah, I, I had a sickness. I'm, I got real humble though. Huh? Huh? What the hell? Because well, if you make your money protecting Zaddy, the last thing you're going to do is say, hey, Zaddy whooped on me. That'll dry all your money up. 
That's the last thing you're going to do. If you say, hey, look at what happened to me. Zaddy whooped on me. Your money is going to dry up. Not saying that that's what happened. I'm not saying that's what happened, but damn. Did somebody try to put a rope around your neck? That look, come on, what the hell is that? Yeah, somebody said it looked like some race play gone wrong or something. What kind of, yeah, she didn't explain what the sickness was. Hold on, let me, let me bring those pictures back up again. She never explained what the sickness was. Them look like rope burns. Like somebody put a rope around her damn neck. What in the hell? Dude, okay, I'm, I'm not, I'm just, I'm just speculating here. Yeah? Allegedly, I don't know. I, I ain't never seen no eczema all up on your neck like that, dude. That ain't no damn eczema under your neck like that. Okay, whatever. Okay. Yeah, somebody said it, was, it looked like she was, might have been dry snitching. That looked like some, it could have been some dry snitching. Like you don't want to say really what's going on. You're trying to um, use code words as a cry for help. So later on, so later when you want to drop the hammer, you can say, hey, you know, look, this is what happened to me. I, I don't know. I don't know. But Candace with this whole little rebrand trying to be bed woke. You know, we're not buying it. This woman has said vile stuff about black people. This one, no, I'm going to pull up because she has me blocked on my main account. So let me um, pull up some of her tweets. Hold on one second. Let me pull up some of her tweets while I'm here. All right, hold on one second. Because, um, yeah, we, we used to point out how she used to brag about being Caribbean. She bragged about being Caribbean. And I think the family's from St. Thomas or somewhere like that. Uh, da, 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 da. Where's that tweet? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Oh, yeah, here it is. Oh, look, right here. This is this is her right here. Look at this. Look at this. Today, I'm studying why Caribbean immigrants far surpass black Americans in terms of economic success. If America awards success based on skin color, this wouldn't be possible. All researchers conclude that they are simply more driven. I'm of St. Thomas descent. Very proud. Well, how come St. Thomas is a crap hole? All right. Stephen A. Smith's family is from St. Thomas too, I think. Then why is St. Thomas a damn crap hole? How come y'all ain't driven in St. Thomas? Yeah. Yeah. So this woman is straight up and down tethered. This is like one of her old images right here when she was trying to model right here. This is one of her whole old images when her on her old modeling page where she puts herself Candace Owens, 5'8 slim, ethnicity Caribbean. So yeah, she's been on that. She's been having this vitriol towards foundational black Americans, which is what we've been warning people about for years. You dig? Hold on. And where's that tweet she said about Juneteenth? Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, yeah, <clears throat> right here. This is her fair use. Again, I've been told that. Fair use, fair use, fair use. This is her denigrating our foundational Black American lineage, talking about Juneteenth is ghetto and Happy made day up. Happy after Juneteenth, everybody. I hope everybody had a very relaxing day off. Bad news for me, apparently I have been banned from the Black community again. I've been told that I am not invited to the various cookouts. And the reason why is because I was tweeting and I said something along the lines of Juneteenth is ghetto and it's made up and people were very upset about that. And I would like to just write off of that apologize for what I said, and I'm going to tell you why I do feel compelled to apologize for that tweet. Plus, later on in the show, we're going to be discussing Andrew Tate. Okay, okay, I don't want to go into the whole thing. Okay. I don't even want to hear her, her babble. Okay, every holiday is made up, all right? 
Every single holiday is made up. What kind of nonsense is that? Every holiday, somebody made it up. Somebody made up Halloween. Somebody made up Christmas. Somebody made up Easter. All holidays are made up. All right? So, yeah, this, this whole thing denigrating our lineage. Her whole thing is all about denigrating our lineage. Yeah? And bigging up the Caribbean lineage. She's very proud of that Caribbean lineage, but black, us, foundational black Americans, oh, we're the worst. But you, you brought your little ashy ass over here among us. Yeah? And her thing is dumping on black people all the time and, and protecting Zaddy. Zaddy can do no wrong. Zaddy can never do no wrong. And the thing is with, with Candace bragging about her high IQ husband, her Zaddy, um, ma'am, you get in your bed, your bed once you wake up, wake up call. Your bed wench wake up call is letting you know you're not going to get no inheritance from these white supremacists. These white supremacists, you think you're going to take the bed wench route in order to get a bag out of them. Now, look, these white supremacist think tanks. Yeah, they papered her up to be their pit bull against black society. She gets to dump on black society while the white supremacists, they get to hide and say, hey, I'm not racist. Candace is saying that. Yeah, we done paid her a whole bunch of money, but she's saying it. Yeah, you're paying her to say it. And the thing is, like uh, Professor Black Truth says, when the white supremacists get through with their tools, they break their tools. And that's what they're doing now. They're breaking their tools. Yeah? Because the thing is, she talks about the, the she got with her white husband because, you know, IQ. She has a high IQ and he has a high IQ. And, you know, high IQ people, they date their IQs and all of this stuff. And my thing is this with Candace, if your IQ is so high and you're so driven and you're so educated, why haven't you used your education to build something on your own? Why is your only career advancement is being a, 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 an attack dog for white supremacists? That's, that's her only career um resume niche. That's the only thing that woman has achieved as far as a career. The only thing Candace Owens has achieved in a career is being an attack dog for the white supremacists. Why didn't you use all of that intelligence and your IQ and all of your education and all of that St. Thomas drive? How come you didn't do that to really build something Except you became a professional bed wench. Where is your success doing anything else besides white ass kissing? Yeah? Yeah, you get the Stacy Dash treatment. Y'all sit up here and try to toe the line for, and Stacy has that Caribbean background. You try to toe the line for the white supremacists and then <clears throat> they dump on you, punch down on you, whoop on you. Remember, um, Stacey Dash was with her zaddy, got in a fight with zaddy, her ass gets arrested. Yeah? Yeah? So how come you're not using all of that intelligence for building something independently on your own? Yeah? Damn, we got a lot of people in here real fast. We got... We're 7,000 people in here. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We're in here heavy. We're in here very, very heavy. But listen, she thought she was going to get the bedwinch payout. Listen, the white supremacists, they make sure that bedwinches don't really get anything. That whole bedwinch hustle, the white supremacists are hip to that. Bedwinches getting around Zaddy thinking they're going to finesse a bag out of them in the long run by laying up with them. Nah, nah, you got to hit them on some street shit to get your paper real quick up out of them. Um, 
But the white supremacists, they've covered that whole thing where women, black women who are going to bed when they're going to try to get a bag. That's what marriage licenses were created for. Family, they created marriage licenses to really stop black women from getting inheritances from white men that they married back during the um, early 1900s. Um, at first, to get married, you didn't have to get a marriage license. You didn't need a marriage license to get married. But what happened was they saw some black women coochie whooping some of these white supremacists. And these white supremacists kind of, they, they find them an old trick and, and get wiped up by the old trick. And they coochie whoop them old tricks, put a little of that root work on them. <clears throat> them sisters would put some root work on them white tricks. And then them white tricks would die and then leave all their money to them. There were, there were cases about things like that. A sister named Hannah Elias. It was a black woman named Hannah Elias who was really the first self-made black woman millionaire. It wasn't Madam C.J. Walker. It was Hannah Elias. They never talk about her because she was hustling these white supremacist men. She had her a couple of zaddies who was rich. She put some of that root work on them and they were leaving her hundreds of thousands of dollars. They tried to take her to court to take her money. She had a mansion on Park Avenue in New York. She was instrumental in making Harlem black, by the way because she got with some real estate developers and they started moving black people into Harlem and then that started to turn it black. A lot of folks don't know that. This is a very important woman that they've kind of written out of history because she was finessing these white supremacist males, spitting game at them and making them give her all types of big money. This woman had all types of bank accounts. She was papered all the way up. In fact, I think she was the first person in America to get, a, get plastic surgery. I think she got a nose job. And it was the first time somebody got um, cosmetic surgery like that. I think she was the first one to do that because she was trying to play herself off as a little more exotic because they were so mad that a black woman was getting all this money from these white supremacist males. And in, in court, they were like, she's doing voodoo or hoodoo. They knew she had some kind of Majora spirit. They knew she had a Majora spirit. And in court, they were saying, "This she's a, a, a voodoo priestess. She's doing hoodoo on us. You got to stop her. She's using some magic on, on us. And that was the thing. So you had a lot of black women who were getting money from these white supremacist males. So they said, okay, we're going to have to have marriage licenses to kind of determine who we're going to allow to get married. So um, they said, if you want to get married, you got to go th get this license. So if you're a white couple, you got the license. Your white couple got the license. The black woman... White man, uh, nah, you can't get a license. You think? That was the vibe. We almost got 8,000 people in here. Shout out to everybody in here. We are in here heavy. Hannah Elias is spelled like Elias, E-L-I-A-S. All right? Yeah, she was fighting his kids. She had this white man breaking bread, and his kids were trying to get the money back. Yeah? They were like, this negress is using hoodoo, tricking my dad out of money. <laughs> she had them whooped. Yeah. But yeah, they've been hip to that. They don't want sisters to, to, to get bags off these white supremacists. They don't, they hate that. So they've kind of sold that game up a little bit. Yeah. But the thing is, with Candace Owens, her whole thing is, you know, Zaddy can do no wrong. She denigrates black society, protects white Zaddy, and that's been her whole shtick. And now that she's on the outs with these white supremacists, she has to find another niche. She has to reinvent herself because here's the thing with Candace. Um, Candace can only thrive in white supremacist male dominated spaces. And I'm talking about the far right white supremacists. Some of the right of center white supremacists and the casual white supremacists, she can't thrive in those societies. 
she can't thrive in those environments and she definitely can't thrive in a black environment. She can't be around white women and that's why she can't be around a right of center or casual white supremacist male dominated society. She has to be around those far right wing white supremacists because see those far white right wing white supremacist males, they're hostile to white women, you see? A lot of the far right white supremacist males, they're very abusive to white women. They got to, they like to smack white women into place. They think white women like to race mix too much. They know that white women, many of them have a hankering for the soul pole. So that's why you notice a lot of these alt right dudes, they have black women or they have Asian women. A lot of these far right dudes, they, they get with Asian women because they think, well, the Western white woman has been too poisoned already. So they're very hostile to white women. That's why Candace can be around them. Yeah? But uh, a casual white supremacist male environment where these guys still have white wives, Candace can't be around that kind of environment because the white wives wouldn't allow it. Because they, the white women can smell a bed wench around their husband a mile away. They know what a bed wench looks like and smells like, and they know that Candace is doing the bird man hand rub to sleep with one of their husbands. These white women know this. So they wouldn't allow a Candace Owens to be in a casual racist environment. It has to be a far right environment. So Candace can't be around white women. The white women are not going to let her around because the white women know that Candace is going to be after her dude, the white women's guys. Yeah? They know this. So the, the, Candace is trying to reinvent herself now. So now she's going to try to do the whole, it's, oh man, it was just a little tough love for me. I'm just trying to, I just want to see the black community do better. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't do that by denigrating every black person who's been harmed by a white supremacist and running interference for these white supremacists. And the thing is, you don't you can't come around us talking about um, thriving and all of that stuff. Listen, let me let, look. Talking about how the black kids can't read and black kids this and the black community and the father was taken out of the home. We've been talking about that for years. We know that. She was on the Breakfast Club talking about how the fathers were taken out of the home in the 1960s. And when they say that, that's really them trying to take a dig at the Democrats. They try to blame the Democrats. And that's another thing, family. When it comes to the white supremacists, Candace and those people, they try to play this whole game where they break them up in different groups. Family, don't ever fall for that trick where you want to break the white supremacists up in different groups. That is a trick bag that you do not fall for. All right? That's a trick bag you do not, do not, do not, do not fall for. Because the thing is, all of these groups work together against us. They all get on code against us. And what they do, they play this little baiting game to get black people to attack a subgroup of white supremacists so that when we attack the subgroup, they can flip it on us as if we're the bigots against them and then all the other white supremacists will all get on code with that subgroup. That's why you never let them play this game where they try to trick you into attacking a subgroup. That's a con game. They try to do that with us all the time. So they'll try to say, oh, it's not white supremacy, it's the Democrats, they're the real racists. Oh no, it's not, no, 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 it's the Republicans, they're the real racists. They try to make it about a political party. No, it ain't. It ain't about no political party because Ben Shapiro is supposed to be right wing, but the, the liberal media, they protect Ben Shapiro. They never talk about his vile anti-black racism. The liberal media, they protected Kyle Rittenhouse. <clears throat> They protected him. They didn't denigrate Kyle Rittenhouse like they denigrate other victims of crimes who are black. A black person who's a victim of a crime, they'll denigrate the black person. 
the white supremacists will be like, oh, it's not, no, 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 it's not white supremacists, it's the white Christians. Because, you know, they supported the Klan. No, 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 it's not the white Christians, it's really the Jews. Then they try to go religious. They'll try to make it seem like it's a religious thing. Oh, no, no, no. It's the, it ain't the white people. It's the Jews who ain't really white. They're not really white. It's the Jews who are the problem. That's their favorite one. Oh, it's not the Jews. No, 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 no. It's really the Mormons. <clears throat> the Mormons think very negatively of black people. That's what the problem is. It's not the Jews or the Christians. It's the Mormons. Don't let them run that religious game because you. the minute you focus on one group, if you say, okay, well, why are the Jews doing this? And then all of a sudden, oops, he's anti-Semitic. And then all of them will join in behind the Jewish community and then say, you're anti-Semitic as a black person. They all get on code. Then they'll try to do the gender thing. It ain't white supremacy. It's the white feminist. All those evil racist white feminists. It's the, the white feminists. They're the problem. It ain't racism. It's the white feminism. And then you attack the white feminist. Oh, he's misogynist. He's misogynistic. Me too. He was attacking the white feminist and he had sex in his eyes. He looked like he wanted to sleep with him. Yeah. Then the white women will say, no, no, it's not the white women. It's the white men. It's patriarchy. Patriarchy and white supremacy is one and the same. Right? They try to play that game. No, the white supremacist male and the white feminist woman, they all work together. Then, well, it's not white men, the white women, it's the white LGBT. They're the problem. That's your problem. Then if you go after the white LGBT, oh, hey guys, he's homophobic. Everybody, come on, let's attack the black folks because now the blacks are being homophobic. See, that's why you don't, don't let them break you up and they're playing hot potato. So the minute you focus on any one of those subgroups, they can all get together on code and attack black people by saying, oh, that's the real bigot. Look, he's attacking the LGBT. Look, he's attacking the Jews people. Look, he's attacking the women. Yeah? And they all click up on you. Don't ever fall for that hot potato trick. They'll try to bait you all the time. You notice whenever I do my lives, the white supremacists come in all the time. Well, dude, it's not really the white, just the Jews. Stop it. We don't play that game. Are, are you scared of the Jews, dude? They try to play this weak peer pressure. Are you afraid of the Jews, dude? That's not going to work. That peer pressure don't work. Our problem is not a religious problem. It's not a Jewish problem. We have a white supremacy problem. They're black people who are Jewish. They're not oppressing anybody. Yeah? The problem is not religious. The religion is white supremacy. That is the problem. Yeah? That's the problem. So you don't never let these people play the hot potato three card Monty game. Yeah. Oh yeah. Then they try to play. Well, it's not really about race. It's about money. It's not about money because the white supremacists, they have a monetary value. I broke this down the other day. <clears throat> the average white person in America in particular they have an unwritten billion dollar insurance policy. I explained this before in one of my lives. The average white person in America, in the system of white supremacy, they have a $1 billion insurance policy. It's an unwritten policy that gives them up to a billion dollars worth of protection. One example of that is Cal Rittenhouse. The defense Cal Rittenhouse received in court for killing two people, a black person would have to pay damn near a billion dollars to get that, to get a judge on your team, to get a whole judge to act as your lawyer, 
to get the police department on your side? I, I want y'all to calculate this stuff. To get the whole white media on your side? To get the prosecutors all on your side? You would have to pay as a black person a billion dollars for that to pay off a judge to sit here and act as your, your lawyer, to pay off whole police departments to sit here and protect you, to pay off the entire white media to sit here and run defense for you and to not show you beating up girls and you plotting to kill somebody. You ding? That boy got over a uh, damn near billion dollars worth of insurance. Now, here's the thing. When it gets over a billion, then they'll sacrifice you. When it gets over a billion, then they'll sacrifice you. They'll have to throw you to the wolves. Eh, we gotta, you're going to have to be a white sacrifice. And Derek Chavin was the billion-dollar white sacrifice. Because when Derek Chavin killed um, George Floyd, they were going to protect him. They had every intention to protect him, and they were protecting him until the whole country turned up and then the bill got too high. Though that billion dollar bill and then it got to two million dollar two billion. You understand? That two billion dollar bill came. It was like a couple of billion dollars worth of damage in the United States because of Derek Chavin. They had to eh, Derek, we gotta ah uh, oh man, the bill is too high, brother. We gotta let you go. We got to let you go, brother. We got to go ahead and you got to be that white sacrifice. Eh? Yep, Donald Sterling too. Donald Sterling too. Exactly. Donald Sterling, when they were about to lose money with Donald Sterling, with all that racist stuff he was saying, they're losing sponsors. Huh? When they're losing sponsorships, People are pulling out because of his racism. When that bill got too high, that bill getting up there to like a billion dollars, you're going to have to sell the team, buddy. Yeah? Yeah, that bill went up. So yeah, when that bill gets to around a billion dollars, then they're going to have to sacrifice them white supremacists. So yeah, their lives have a monetary value in the system of white supremacy. See, that's why the Kyle Rittenhouse thing was so important to the system of white supremacy to let other white supremacists know, you got to get on code. We need y'all to get on code. And part of the code is the benefits you get is that we'll give you this billion dollars of protection. So you might be living in a trailer park, but if you do something to a black person or to somebody who's sympathetic to a black person, we got a billion dollars worth of insurance for you. You dig? We'll protect you. And that helps them maintain the system of white supremacy. That's why they don't want to destroy the system of white supremacy. The white supremacists, they benefit from it. They don't want to destroy that system, even though they know it's an evil system. They benefit from it. You know, they, they want the Kyle Rittenhouse treatment. That's why they're parading Kyle Rittenhouse and, and letting him, but we got... Over 8,000 people in here. We're in here heavy. Yeah, just like um, Harvey Weinstein. The bill got too high. They had to sacrifice him. That bill got too high. Yeah? The bill got too high. We're in here heavy. Yeah? We are in here heavy, ladies and gentlemen. But the thing is, this whole tough talk about black people, oh, we want black people, Candace is out here. I'm just being tough because I want black people to work hard and I want black people to do this and do that. Listen, you can't sit up here and say you want this and that for black people, but you're running interference and protecting the white supremacists because we're not going to get where we need to be until we deal with the white supremacist problem. You understand? Everything and all of our issues go back to the white supremacists. That's where our issues stem from. And we got to handle that white supremacist problem. Because see, everything we build, they sabotage it. 
Every time we build something, these white supremacists go out of their way to sabotage it. We don't have a problem with building anything. The problem is the white supremacists, when they see black people, see we're the only threat. Our empowerment is the only empowerment that's a threat. They don't mind so-called empowering these other groups. That's why all of these immigrant groups are flooding over here and they're giving them legs up left and right. They got all types of money, resources for these other groups, family. They are letting these other groups run for nest games and scams left and right. Y'all know the housing scams these people are doing over here. They're letting these immigrant groups come over here and scam houses out of people left and right. They got these people over here scamming houses and they got on, they're on TikTok teaching each other how to scam for houses. Down in Georgia, it was an elderly FBA man got forced out of his house because some, and they're hiding this guy's identity. He looks like he might be an East Indian dude. Look at this, elderly Georgia homeowner forced out of his house, arrested after alleged fraudster claimed ownership. So this dude, and they're not even naming the, the guy who did it, and this is an old black man right here. He light-skinned as hell. But this black man is 70-something years old and got arrested for trespassing in his own house. I think that's his wife right there. And this is the sus, the person. This looks like an East Indian, don't it? They're hiding his identity. Why are they hiding this man's identity? <clears throat> this is the man who finessed the house. He went and did some fraudulent deed paperwork. And down in Georgia, you can um, file deed papers online. It's some real weird stuff down there. But this guy looks like an East Indian, don't he? And they're hiding his damn identity. Yeah? So they're sitting up here letting these damn immigrants come over here and defraud black people. I told y'all that was going to happen too. When we start here about these People coming over using these squatter laws. I said, they're going to be, they're going to target black folks with these things. They're going to start getting black folks with this. They're going to start getting up in black people's houses and finessing black people out of these homes. And that's exactly what they're doing. Okay? And black folks, we sat up here on this minority coalition nonsense. Family. Dr. Claude Anderson has been trying to tell us for years that whole minority coalition thing is a myth. That whole minority coalition where these other groups coming over here, we thinking that they're bonding with us, man. No, these people are so vitriolic towards us and hostile. Come on, man. We gotta we can't be politically naive out here. Eh? Man. Family, that's why, man, we got to get back out there to D.C. Fam, we got to get out here and let our voices be heard and also to get our collective cohesion game going. You know, we got to be very serious about, hey, we got to speak up for FBA issues. We have to say, hey, we are not satisfied with what's going on in the political climate. We are not satisfied with our tax dollars going to these groups who's coming over here finessing our asses. Man, we got to say, hey, enough is enough. <clears throat> because, see, they have no problem letting these groups do all of this stuff and giving them an economic leg up because their empowerment is not a threat. These other groups are not a threat. They know their place. They don't mind letting these other groups thrive and, and giving them an opportunity and the resources to thrive because they're going to know, they're going to, they're not going to challenge white mommy, white daddy. They know that. Us, on the other hand, they know we as foundational black Americans, when we get equal footing, we start to dominate. We dominate, ladies and gentlemen, and they know that. That's why there's this, this constant need to keep a foot on our necks because they know once we get equal footing, it's to the moon with us. You think? And understand this, not just foundational black Americans, I give props to black people 
Um, well, in, in some of the black people in the past, because when you look down to in Latin American countries, um, you see the white Hispanics coming over here. The white Hispanics, they're not really going to challenge white supremacy because they're trying to get amalgamated inside of white supremacist society. The white Hispanics that they're letting over, they are not going to challenge white supremacy. Truth be told, the white Hispanics have never really challenged white supremacy. Think about it. When have, when have the white supremacists or the, or the white Latinos ever challenged white supremacy? They've never really challenged it in big numbers. Even some of the revolutions in Latin America, those were the black people down there doing that stuff. Those were the black people putting in work. Over in Cuba, Antonio Maceo, it's called the Bronze Titan. The black man, a black Cuban who was leading a revolution down there in Cuba. Um, down in Brazil, it was Zumbi. It was a, a black maroon who was challenging the Portuguese. It was the black people. Down in Mexico, Gaspar Yanga, black man, a black maroon who was fighting the Spanish. You look all through Latin America, the people who were fighting the, uh, the European powers, the main ones were the black people down there. Yeah? It was the black people putting in the work. So they know these people that they're letting up here, these white Hispanics, they're not going to challenge white supremacy. Now we will. We challenge it and we thrive. You yeah? know? And when we get a little bit, we know how to flip it. That's how thorough we are. We get a little bit and we can flip it. They they try to throw us to the wind and we know how to flip that thing. Every time they try to throw us to the wind, we thrive. Yeah? In Oklahoma, when black people freed themselves out of Florida, we got to look at the, um, the Seminole War as a slave revolution and the black people down in Florida, they were stopping slavery down there. They were burning down them plantations and freeing black people. Our FBA family put in mad work down there in Florida. Go look at my movie, American Maroon. That's why they had to send those Maroons and black Seminoles out to Oklahoma. They sent them out to Oklahoma because they, they said, we can't even enslave them again if we wanted to. They'll just turn up everybody on the plantations. So they made a deal. They said, okay, look, we'll give you a proclamation. We'll give you your freedom. Y'all just get out of Florida. Look, y'all go over to Oklahoma. We got, we got some Indian territory over there. It's basically a no man's land. Y'all just going out there. Go all the way out there to the west. <clears throat> so they had the Black Seminoles out there in Oklahoma thriving. We're thriving out there. And we were protecting each other. That's why a lot of black folks were going to Oklahoma when they were escaping slavery too. Bass Reeves went to Oklahoma when he got out of slavery. Bass Reeves, who's one of the greatest lawmen, who the Lone Ranger is based off of. I think Bass Reeves was in Texas. He beat up his slave owner and went to um, Oklahoma. There's a reason why they didn't go get him. Think about that. This dude beat his slave owner up and then just went to another state. They didn't go get him because he went up there around them Seminoles. He was living around the black Seminoles. They didn't want them problems. The Seminoles, were, the black Seminoles were not nobody to run up on. Yeah. And they started creating all types of black towns in Oklahoma. Even to this day, Oklahoma, the state of Oklahoma, that state has the most independent black form cities in America. The most independent black owned towns or black run towns in America in Oklahoma. They had the most independent black run cities, Oklahoma. Because the white supremacists kind of threw black folks out there on their own. They weren't, the white supremacists weren't out there in big numbers yet. So we were left alone. We started thriving. That's why Black Wall Street got popping the way it did. Because the white supremacists in the South, you know, they kind of lived around black folks. But in Oklahoma, they just kind of put black folks on the other side of town. And then, you know, they, you kind of, 
wander over there and see, hey, why all these niggas got cars? Why all these Negroes got these mansions? How in the hell did that happen? We went out there to Oklahoma and start bawling the hell out. That's when they had to bomb it. They had to drop a bomb on the place. Yeah? You see? Oh, yeah, Oklahoma has a lot of black-run cities, the most in the country. A lot of folks don't know that. Most of the black-formed countries, I mean, um, cities, I'm sorry, most of the black-run cities, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yeah? <clears throat> so we know how to get out when people leave us the hell alone. We start failing when the white supremacists get in our damn mix. Same thing with the Bronx. They threw black people in the Bronx to the wolves. They were going to starve black people out. Black people up there in the projects. They took away school programs, jobs. Um, landlords were burning up buildings for insurance money. They're like, y'all black folks, y'all do what you do over there. Yep, y'all out of sight, out of mind. Y'all figure it out, black folks. And our FBA family went up there in the Bronx and created hip-hop culture. Created the most influential cultural movement that we've had in the last 50 years. Yeah? That's why y'all got to go see Microphone Check. Microphone Check coming out in a couple of months. Y'all better go to microphonecheck.com to get your, your tickets to see that right now. Um, we got... Four cities on the website right now, microphonecheck.com. We got um, the Los Angeles tickets are available. The New York tickets are available. The Dallas tickets are available. And the Detroit tickets are available. Get your tickets now. It's 100% going to be sold out, so you better get your tickets early. Uh, microphone check is such a phenomenal piece. Such a phenomenal piece. Setting the, the record straight. Because you got, listen, what's funny now, everybody knows that Microphone Check is coming out now. So there are people kind of changing the, the narrative now. Um, you got some of the Puerto Rican cats who are just kind of, they, they're kind of coming clean now. Some of them are trying to come clean by saying, hey, yeah, it was the black people who was doing it first. <clears throat> but you got people like Derek Colon who still, oh, he's still desperate. And shout out to a brother named Truth Savior, he had a debate with Cologne the other day and this brother lit Cologne's ass up. Now, for, the, for those who don't know, Derek Cologne is a Puerto Rican teacher who tries to teach hip hop and he be lying his ass off. Trying to say that Puerto Ricans and blacks did it together. Not only did they do it together, blacks were kind of getting the stuff from the Puerto Ricans. So he's been trying to run with that lie and we've been beating that damn lie down. So now you got some Puerto Ricans who like some of the B-boys who were around in the late 70s. So they're kind of coming clean now because look, when microphone check drops, all the people on that 50-50 nonsense, y'all gonna be looking real crazy and they know they're gonna look crazy. So you have this one dude who's a B-boy named Mr. Wiggles, a Puerto Rican guy. So he came up with a video saying, yeah, in the 70s, it was all black people. And then Dr. Cologne got upset. So Dr. Cologne, Derek Cologne, wants him to get on code. Look at this video. Fair use, fair use, fair use. And, and Dr. Cologne, I know you're watching. You should give me a shout out for giving your page some shine, all right? So Derek Cologne is upset that his Puerto Rican brethren is out here telling the truth. His, his Puerto Rican brethren is telling the truth and, and Dr. Cologne wants Mr. Wiggles to lie, <laughs> basically. Look at this. This is Derek Cologne. Hold on. Listen to this. Hold on. What's up, y'all? My name is Dr. Derek Cologne, and I'm here to address a very serious issue when it comes to the world of b-boying. Mr. Wiggles has yet put out another statement making claims that the original b-boys of the 70s in the bronx were all black which they were he in fact states that no puerto ricans were doing footwork right in the 70s. right fair use and right i'm gonna let you watch some of his clips 
and let you be the judge of what he is or is not saying. Oh, Lord. Well, this dude, Cologne, be explaining. It's always what he he said it, but he meant this. Boy, Cologne is the king of the splainers. Boy, this dude be splaining. And I know you're watching, Derek Cologne. I know you're watching. Let me just fix this. Hold on. Hold on. What did I do? What did I do? Hold on. Hold on. I didn't mean to do that. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We have to get this truth right. We have to get this. He, he's telling the truth. You, tr you want to get the lies right. History straight. We have to define these terms as to what they originally meant. I'm going to be coming in from time to time giving commentary. Sit back, relax, enjoy, and think. Uh, I'm from the neighborhood where the buildings were on fire. Yeah, I made that point. Oh, oh. And uh, in that neighborhood, a lot of the pioneers of hip hop, Vampada, Flash, and all the B-Boys were all black. I didn't see. All the B-Boys were all black. No Latino B-Boys. I didn't see no Latino B-Boys. The Puerto Ricans are telling the truth. Notice what he says. I didn't see any Latino B-Boys. Notice what he says. I didn't see. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. Not that there weren't any in the Bronx in the 70s, but I didn't see. Oh, God. They weren't there, dude. But he's going to continue and almost make it seem like that's not what he's saying. He's saying universally in the Bronx in the 70s, Puerto Ricans were not rocking out like that. They weren't. Let's keep listening. Yeah. Never heard of TBB, never heard of CC, never heard of them. In my neighborhood, all the B-Boys never heard of them. He says he never heard of TBB, he never heard of CC. He says the B-Boys in his neighborhood never heard of TBB. Right. And remember when I had a debate with him, with Cologne, I said the exact same thing. Nobody heard of those crews that Cologne keeps trying to talk about. Or never heard of CC. But that's weird because they are well-known B-Boy crews. No, they're not. No, they're not. Now, I could understand if you never heard of them in your neighborhood, but that's not how you are making it come across, Wiggles. You're making it come across as if you're saying, in the Bronx, the B-Boys were black. Latinos were not doing footwork. They weren't. And the Bronx never heard of those crews. They didn't. So it sounds like you're saying, or could you be saying, we just never heard of them in our neighborhood. Okay, okay, okay. I can only take so much of his horse shit. <laughs> when, I, when I did a debate with him, I said the exact same thing. The t these TV, all these crews, that he was he was talking about these mythological crews that were the original B-boys who were Puerto Rican that black people learned from. I'm like, nobody's heard of these crews, dude. Nobody heard of these people. These were not known folks at all. They're not on nobody's flyers. Nobody knew them. Yeah? See, it's very important. We know he's full of crap, but it's still important to check this stuff, family. This is why we got to be on people's bumper about this stuff. Because see, for a long time, we let people say this type of stuff and we're like, oh, he's just talking. And then what happens is this stuff gets printed in books, articles, it gets put in awards. So then it, it, it starts getting documented in the historic record. So these people, we let them lie without checking them. And then the lie becomes a part of the damn history. So this has to be cleaned up, man. This stuff has to be cleaned the hell up. And that's what we're doing now. This is what we're doing now, ladies and gentlemen. We're cleaning up these damn lies. Man, I cannot wait for y'all to see microphone check. 
Y'all need to be in the theater with your family early with your popcorn, drinks. Man, this is going to be a, a phenomenal event. And let me you can bring the whole family. There is some cursing in the movie. I will say that. We, the, this is a hip-hop documentary, so there's going to be some curse words here and there. Not too bad, but there's some curse words in there. But the kids, you know, just cover the kids' ears. It, br bring the family. Bring the family so you, you, the youngins can learn history, too. It's the, the movie is PG-13. We do have profanity in it. We do have profanity in the movie, later on in the movie, but it's still it's a great historic educational piece. Yeah. And and check out that debate with um Cologne and Brother Truth Savior, because Truth Savior is a jazz guy. Oh my god, he was dismantling Cologne's BS, just meticulously dismantling that stuff. He keeps lying because they've been lying so long. And he's he has to lie, and he has to get all the other people on code with the lie. Because they see what, listen, family, do y'all understand these folks see microphone check coming? They know it's over. They see what's going to happen. You, you understand? See, the thing, we've, we just haven't challenged them. We've been letting these folks get away with lying so long, we haven't challenged them. That's been the damn problem. So Cologne is out here talking about uh, the break beats comes from the, the Latino the Descalga, and it comes from Cuban jazz. Oh, goodness. But we know it's horse crap, but if they, if they lie long enough, they'll start printing that stuff in books. Eh? It's important to get this truth out here. Family, they know what's coming with this movie. That family... Y'all saw with the trailer all the shit they were doing, trying to sabotage it. People writing articles and they're calling to get the articles taken down about the movie. They know what's coming. Oh, we the, the hammer is getting dropped Memorial Day weekend, ladies and gentlemen. All the, the, all the lies are going to stop. They, they're trying to just... To, hey, please, Puerto Ricans, somebody get on code with us. We got to keep the lie going. Please get on code. Oh, don't say the, don't tell the truth, Mr. Wiggles. Yeah, some of these Puerto Ricans are like, hey, y'all ain't about to have me looking stupid. It was black people who was out here. It was the blacks who was out here. We didn't have nothing to do with nothing. They, some of them are coming clean. They see what's going down. So when the hammer drops, they're going to be like, well, I told the truth. <laughs> yeah? Oh, the hammer is going to drop. Uh, all the lies are going to stop Memorial Day weekend, family. The lies are going to stop. The movie is two hours and 18 minutes, family. It's a slow roast. It's a slow bake. We're just, we're clearing up everything. We're clearing this stuff up. Yeah? And it's a long time coming. Man, it's a long time coming. Man, man, man. But yet we have to watch the way people try to tell our history. Because people, there's always this desire to take remove foundational black Americans out of it and attribute everything we do to other groups as co-creators or we have to give it to Africa. All right. Just like with hip hop, with hip hop, either we have to credit Caribbeans, we have to credit Puerto Ricans, or we have to say it's Africa. Fat Joe does that. Fat Joe tried that. Well, you're black to Latinos. <coughs> black. And you know what? Um, you know, it's all from Africa. We all African. So it comes, you know, at the end of the day, it comes from Africa. When they did that whole thing with Kamala Harris, that hip hop summit, whatever they did, they sat up here talking about, yeah, hip hop comes from the Caribbean and Africa. They always have to remove us and everything we do, we have to attribute it to Africa. They just did that recently. The Schomburg Center put up a tweet 
they put up this tweet here because Beyonce, our foundational black American princess, our queen sister Beyonce, I love Beyonce, has taken over the country genre with her hit song. She's just changed the game. She made country music hip again. Country music is hip now. But do y'all know how much the white supremacists low-key hate that? Boy, the white supremacists are salty. These white supremacists are so salty because of Beyonce taking back the genre and taking it over again. The Schomburg Center, because that song that Beyonce has is so hot and her album is about to just change the game. Look at what the Schomburg Center put out. Beyonce recently made history as the first black woman to have the number one country music song with Texas Hold'em. Discover the African roots of country music in this 2021 blog post. Stop. Oh, Lord. No, 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 no. Country music is <clears throat> foundational black American culture. All right? Country music is foundational black American culture. All right? Because you go to the blog post, they're naming a bunch of FBA people. All right? No, we're, we're, not, we're not playing the game where everything we do constructive and positive, we have to give it to Africa. No disrespect to Africa. No, we're, we're claiming ownership of the stuff we create. We're not invisible. We're not playing that game. We're not giving all of our achievements away no more. Damn that. We are not doing that. That's dead. We're not giving our achievements away. Country, no, no African people doing country music. That's 100% foundation of black American. We create that right here on this soil. Then... We have to let people know that we're taking ownership of these genres and the things that we create. We're not giving them away no more. Yeah? We're not playing that game. We're not going to do the, the catch-all thing with the culture. No disrespect to anybody. Because when people, when, when they get wins, just like with Afro Beats, when that started getting hot, they had, hey, we need a whole different Grammy category for us. Yeah. When Afro beats start getting hot, the minute they start getting some hot stuff, oh, we need our own category. If we want to start winning awards, we need an African music category. All right, knock yourself out. All right, knock yourself out. We got an FBA category too, the country, hip hop, everything else. Yeah. So that's what it is. Man, we in here heavy. We are in here heavy. Hope everybody, all the new people in here, subscribe to this channel, ladies and gentlemen. Subscribe to this channel, ladies and gentlemen. And don't forget, man, at the Hidden History Museum, on April 13th, we're going to have a comedy show, and we're going to have the great Miss Tori Hart, one of the featured comedians. That's, that's um, Kevin Hart's ex-wife. And she's a very, very funny sister. She just got off tour with Cat Williams. She's going to be performing at the Hidden History Museum April 13th. That's in a couple of weeks from now. And we have a whole bunch of other phenomenal comedians. Y'all um, hit the link right there. We, have, we don't have the flyer up for her yet. But um, click um, HiddenHistoryMuseum.com and go to the Spring Fever Fling link for April 13th and get your tickets. We're going to have complimentary food complimentary drinks and a great comedy show and it's a great networking vibe the hidden history museum phenomenal place man we have a ball up there y'all come kick it with me man y'all come on up there april 13th and have a good time with us man we're gonna have a ball up there come up there and put your root work deodorant on and join us and have a ball speaking of deodorant you know, I know a lot of white people are buying root work deodorant, but that's that's interesting. A lot of shout out to the white people who are buying root work. A lot of white people are buying the root work deodorant. 
They like that authentic thing too. They want the real deal too. They want the real McCoy. Shout out to them. They love it too. That root work is not a joke. So it says she wrote Kevin. Jo yeah, Tori Hart is very funny. Very funny sister. Tori Hart is very funny. So yeah, we're going to have a ball having that sister up at the museum performing. Man, we have a great time at the museum. Man, we have such a ball up there. It's a it's a vibe. And we got great food up there. Uh, it, it's a vibe. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. Then, speaking of folks in the dominant society, I, I saw this video and I've said this. There's a lot of people in the dominant society. When it comes to bathing, boy, some of them don't be bathing. I remember, didn't Serena Williams said she had to teach her husband how to use a washcloth? She has a zaddy and she said she had to teach him how to use a washcloth. Dude. I said before, a lot of folks in the dominant society, they don't bathe every day. It's real weird. This is what they say. This is what they say. Listen to this clip here. This, this woman in the dominant society talking about how she bathes. And this is very common. And I, I've told people about this before. Very interesting dynamic. Very interesting. Hold on. Shout out to my brother, Red Joker. He posted this. Y'all need to follow Red Joker. His posts are funny on um, Twitter. But listen to this. They're talking about their bathing habits. Hold on. Mm -hmm. What's the first thing you wash? Okay, I, I definitely go hair first. Hair first? Hair first. Do you wash your hair every time? Well, I only take like one shower every six days, so. So you start with hair? Start with hair. And yeah. then? Uh, then I'll normally do conditioner. And then face wash. <laughs> then they get out. <laughs> Man, I said before, a lot of folks in the dominant society, them washing their hair is the bath. <laughs> they think them washing their hair, that's the bath. And the, the, the suds from the shampoo goes down their body and that's the bath. All they have to do is wash their hair and that is the bath. Okay, okay. Very interesting people. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> She's in there just... <laughs> how long, how long is your short is it? No shame. It's not my past, it's my present, and I'm not ashamed. I do not wash my body. <laughs> At all. Yeah. It's no. a waste of time. The soap, like, runs down you. Sure. So, uh, you know no. how the soap's, like... Yo, absolutely. I'm on the same page. Kinda, like, I'm, not, I'm not on that train. No, I'm not on, I'm not on fully board, <laughs> but, but, like, but, like, I have a ticket. I just don't know if I'm hopping on. Mm -hmm. What's the... That's very common. That is very common, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that is very common. Yeah. But hey, whatever floats your damn boat, whatever floats your boat. You know, some people's cultures are different. Some people have different culture. But yeah, like some of them think washing the hair is the bath. Yeah. More power to you. But listen, let me get out of here, family. It's been real. I'm going to give me a good sleep tonight because I've been on this damn plane all day coming from Washington, D.C. And shout out to D.C. Love D.C. Beautiful people in D.C. Much respect to you guys. Um, but, man, look, we got, we're got we going to be turning up in the next few months, man. We got so many phenomenal things going on. It's time to come outside, family. It is time to come on outside, family. Time to come outside. Um, Y'all need to come to the Hidden History Museum Get your tickets to join us at the um, at movie theaters around the country for microphone check. The preeminent documentary about hip hop culture. This is going to be the end all be all for hip hop culture. You go to microphonecheck.com. Get your tickets now for the following cities. That's on sale now. Los Angeles, Thursday, May 23rd. Get your tickets now. New York, we got two big showings. It's going to be thousands of people there because those are big theaters. 
Get your tickets in New York right now at the SVA Theater. That's going to be Saturday, uh, May 25th. Dallas, Thursday, May 23rd at the Texas Theater. Detroit, Saturday, May 25th at the Bel Air Luxury Cinema. Very comfortable chairs there. There's going to be two showings there. Get your tickets right now, ladies and gentlemen. And also, go to HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. Get your tickets to join me, Tori Hart, um, um, Dwan B., and other phenomenal comedians at the Hidden History Museum this April 13th. Um, get your tickets, HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. And don't forget to go to RootWorkStyle.com to get your RootWork deodorant, ladies and gentlemen.